Welcome to this video for N4 Electric Techniques. And in this video, we'll be looking at the different components of power in an AC circuit. Now, for here, we see that we have power in an AC circuit, and it's represented by the power triangle. We have the apparent power measured in KVA. We have the reactive power measured in volts, amps, reactive. And then we have the real power measured in kilowatts and we have our phase angle between those values. Just to show you the different symbols, we have the symbol P for true power, and the units is kilowatts. And you'll notice for single phase, we do not have square root three inside the formula, and we multiply using the line values and the power factor. The symbol Q is reactive power, and the units is volts, amps, reactive. We use the line values and we multiply by sine theta. For apparent power, the symbol is S and the units is KVA. Here is VL multiplied by IL. Now this example here demonstrates the cost of electricity. Now we as consumers, we pay for the electricity consumed represented by this liquid here. Um, that is the symbol P, which is real power. And that is the actual electricity consumed. The foam, which is the foam of the beer, right at the top over here, is considered to be the, doesn't give you much satisfaction when you drink the beer, but it, it is good to have foam on top of the beer. Now, in terms of electricity, this implies that this is the electricity wasted in the form of heat. However, we as consumers, when you buy your beer, you pay for both the liquid consumed and for the foam that you have for your beer. Now, it's the same thing with electricity. We as customers, we pay for all the electricity, the electricity wasted and the electricity consumed. Just for the definitions of power, for true power, it is the actual power used in a circuit. The reactive power is the power generated but not used and is wasted in the form of heat. Apparent power is the total power of the circuit. The consumer pays for the power used and the power wasted. Cos theta, and I put big brackets around cos theta to indicate that this entire thing represents power factor. Uh, to define power factor, it is the ratio of true power to apparent power. A good power factor is 0, 0,8. A poor power factor is 0, 0,2. An ideal power factor, which is considered to be perfect unity, is one. What are the detrimental effects of a poor power factor? Well, thicker cables are needed to handle the larger current. Uh, it reduces efficiency. It limits the output. More current is drawn, and it costs the consumer more money. Here's an example of a single phase motor. A single phase motor draws 0.75 kilowatts from a 220 volt supply. If the motor is operating at a unity power factor, calculate the following. To calculate the current drawn by the motor, just a reminder of the formula for true power, it is a line voltage multiplied by the line current multiplied by power factor. If we have unity power factor, cos theta is equal to one. So to calculate the line current it is the power of 750 watts divided by 220 volts and the power factor of one, and we get 3,409 amps. To determine the phase angle by which the motor is operating, we utilize uh, cos theta, which is equal to one, and we take cos across, so it becomes cos to the minus one. Uh, so with a perfect unity power factor, it means the phase angle is zero degrees, and this implies that no energy is wasted. So our machine is 100% efficient. The reactive power of the motor, the symbol is Q. It is a line voltage multiplied by the line current multiplied by sine theta. And because the phase angle is zero degrees, we have zero heat wasted. So you can see we have zero volts amps reactive. For three-phase power, we use three coils, which turns 360 degrees and generates three sine waves. For three-phase systems, we get a star connection. You'll see that for star, it is bridged horizontally. Uh, we have a neutral connection point. 
Uh, v phase is between the line and the neutral. The line is between line and line. And we have our common points here, or the neutral point. For delta connection, the terminals are bridged vertically. That's one way to remember it. You'll see that there's no neutral connection. And we have three stator windings placed 120 degrees apart. This is a V phase, and you'll find that V phase is also equal to V line. The advantages of three phase systems over single phase systems, there are two operating voltages. There's more power delivered. Three phase motors are cheaper. Three phase motors are more efficient and they tend to be smaller. Just to show you the formulas for three phase for delta, VL is equal to V phase. And for star, IL is equal to I phase. For our uh, formulas, you'll notice we multiply by square root three inside the formulas. However, everything else stays the same. We have our symbols, true power, reactive power, and apparent power. For true power, we multiply by the power factor. And for reactive power, we multiply by sine theta. All values are line values unless otherwise stated. And we assume 100% efficiency if no efficiency is given. In this example, a three-phase delta-connected motor draws 25 amps from a 380 volt supply at a power factor of 0.86 lagging. To calculate the input power, the formula for power for a three-phase circuit, we multiply by square root three. So therefore the line voltage is 380 volts, the line current is 25 amps, and the power factor is 0.86. So this gives us 14,15 kilowatts. To calculate the apparent power, the symbol is S. It'll be square root 3 times the line voltage times the line current. And that gives us 16,454 kVA. To calculate the phase current of the motor, I phase is equal to IL divided by square root 3 because it's a delta connected motor. And so therefore we get 14,43 amps. Right, thank you for watching this video. Much appreciated. Enjoy your day.